Good morning and welcome. <laughs> I'm a bit straggly this morning. I've been to church, so um, the weather plays havoc with your hair, doesn't it? Look at that. Goodness me. Honestly, here we are. See if that will do it. Hey ho. <laughs> My bridge cut again. <laughs> Not quite as short as last time, I don't think. Not at all. Morning, Lindsay Bit again. Good to see you. Good to see you. <laughs> There's that Lynn, ever faithful. Thank you. <laughs> Got a cup of tea. Wasn't it warm in church today, though, Lynn? It was very lovely. It was really nice and toasty, and we're going to keep that running for a good long while just to make sure we dry the bricks out because it's been a long time. It has a long time. Mm. Those of you who might just pick me up at a later moment or a later day. Morning, Barbara Gordon. Uh, my name's Wendy Murphy. I'm Minister of St Paul's, which is down the bottom of Colton Hill. So, of course, that's in Colton. And, of course, it's facing Tesco. So, it's that on that big building there. So, you know, it's Sunday. It's, can you believe the December the 6th, it's 11 o'clock, and here I am for a yakety yak, um, a conflat, a little chat, a talk. And that's a two way thing, isn't it? All of those are two way things. So do feel free to comment. Good morning again, Barbara Gordon. It's good to see you. That's the thing, isn't it? When we've been in church at 10 o'clock, um, it's difficult for people to, to get back on the phones isn't it for 11 i think we're about um probably finished about quarter to 11 so so you, you we have got a heating now yeah we're a little bit short of the ten thousand that we need um really but uh, we're about 800 pounds short i think eight or nine hundred pounds short but um it was lovely to be in the building and it was lovely uh to be warm and it was really really great so good morning linda Moschetto. good to see you and lee hopefully i'm just um slipping my tea as you can see mm. i think it's a bit warmer today than it was freezing yesterday and the day before wasn't it it was absolutely freezing in fact i nipped into tesco's in bullwell because i have my hair done in bullwell a, a young lady who is a mobile hairdresser and um i ran in to tesco's in bullwell and um where was that oh i was looking at thermals oh that freezing i thought i would have a look at these thermals now I am. Good morning, Tracy Alty. It's good that you're able to join us. Thank you for pressing your buttons, people. That's great. So, you never know what's on underneath these tights, will you now? No, I may well just be um, wearing thermals. Although we won't need thermals in church because it's beautifully warm good morning lynn faulkner again and good morning lynn hewitt it's good to see you as well how's that puppy dog of yours tracy it looks um she looks absolutely beautiful is she a good girl or is she a bit of a tartar i bet she's very spoiled isn't she quite rightly so I say, quite rightly so. <laughs> hmm. I'm going to remind you, because if I don't, Lynn Faulkner will give me a little kick up the bum. I'm going to remind you about singing carols together next week. So uh, we really want it to be lovely, you know. And if you've got a favourite carol, why don't you uh, inbox it to me or to Lynn? She's on Facebook too. And we can... Uh, we can do live at 11 and we can sing some carols. And maybe I'll think about a bit of a reading and we can make it a bit of a nice thing. So um, it may be a few minutes late uh, because we've got communion in church as well. So if you'd like to take bread or the wafer, it will be the singular wafer next week. 
in the building, then please do come along at 10 o'clock. Fear not if you cannot get to the building. That's absolutely not a problem because you could find something in your house, some squash and a little bit of bread and you could join us online. So as I say the words, you can um, break eat your own bread and drink your own squash because you remember we do do the bread and the wine as we remember what Jesus did for us don't we but actually um, they're symbols aren't they I mean I've drunk white wine before I've drunk squash I know youth clubs that have done coca-cola and mars bars because they're symbols aren't they they're symbols of what he did and it doesn't matter in effect whatever we're taking needs that prayer doesn't it and i'll be saying that next week but actually it's here isn't it it for our hearts that that is the most important thing i'm sure that dog is very spoiled tracy orty yeah so um we'll have the communion service it will be recorded uh just as this morning's was so you'll remember that when we're in church at 10 o'clock the recorded service will be at six o'clock in the evening. So if you've gone to look for the 10 o'clock, it isn't there because we've been in church. So it's been recorded from church and then it will be on tonight at six. OK, so all good, I think that is. And that will be the same next week. Yep. So that's good. So we'll start at 10 next week in church. And then uh, I think we're going to have, we've got some, uh, uh, a carol as well. Or is that for the 20th? Then the 20th, we'll leave that there. Then the 20th, we've got um, six o'clock in the evening. So there'll only be me live in the morning. So there's no morning service that day. Uh, we're going to go live at 11. Uh, with me and then six o'clock carols and lessons like it would be if it was in church you see the day before we've got carols going through the speakers courtesy of mark and liz and i think chris might have a hand in that as well they've been practicing chris sue and lynn Faulkner. they've been practicing like man so we're going to have a disc and phil phil walker is going to play that disc for us um in the morning and the evening just to keep us in that christmas spirit the one where we're watching and waiting to welcome jesus so going back to carols um you might have a favorite so if you you can put it on here this morning because lynn's on she can see it and then next week uh, wednesday is your deadline right so you can put it on st paul's facebook page you can put it on my facebook page you can text me my number's on the front of the newsletter you can te you can text me you can email me you can contact lynn on her facebook page you've absolutely no excuse or you might just want to listen to uh, and sing along to the ones that we'll play okay so cool good 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 that's all good. Any more questions uh, about carols? And I'm here to answer them. Or probably Lynn's here to answer them more than me. Uh, let's have a look. Yes. Mm -mm -mm. Carols. I've done the service next week. So you'll know, you'll remember that there's no, this is all in your newsletter. Uh, there's no Christmas Eve service. There's no Chris Dingle. But we have pointed you to the link that you can press on to take you to the Church of England's Chris Dingle service and next weekend they're doing their own Chris Dingle trail so if you've got some children and you'd like to do something very Chris Dingle the eat Chris Dingley then look in the newsletter and it will give you all the uh, all the things in there and all that you need to do so everything is in the newsletter uh, there's a slip of paper that goes down day by day by day, uh, week by week by week, and tells you what is going on. So, and of course, I'll be around uh, until, um, I think it's the 22nd, um, and then I'll have a bit of time off, and then we'll join up again in the new year. 
Okay, so we'll see how it goes. So there's no midnight, there's no Christingle, there's a Christmas Day pre recorded service um, that that will be on uh, from um, early, I think, on Christmas Day. Uh, I don't know, we're gonna gonna think about that because you know for those of us who are desperate to see our family members that's where we need to be with our families don't we and make the most of that time that we've got together so we decided that a pre-recorded service was probably the way to go this time it's not forever obviously as we move into um a, a different time in the new year we'll see how that pans out and we'll hopefully um, you know, but obviously we'll get back into the building as soon as we can. So, um, anybody had an advent calendar? We haven't bought one. We haven't. We haven't bought any of the kids one because they've got one. Isla's got one where you get little booklets and little pens out of, which I thought was very good. No point in buying Elias one at two. Because he just wants stuff, but you should see him with the chocolate. Stop it. Talk about taste and see that the Lord is good. He tastes and see that three chocolates are good at one time. <laughs> like that he was yesterday. So we decided against getting him an advent calendar. Um, well, one with chocolate in anyway. Uh, so, and I was thinking about doors this morning. Okay. I was thinking about, because now we're on... The sixth door, if you've got an advent calendar, it's got chocolate or whatever else inside, then I thought we could have a little thought about doors. Because six days have gone, so we're a quarter, if we do 6, 12, 18, 24 to Christmas Eve, we're a quarter of the way through, aren't we? So it made me think about how many, oh, that's lovely. Lynn, that you've got one, Lynn Sabin. Andrew bought me one from work. So I was thinking, so we've done six days for those of us that have got our door to open. But that got me to thinking about how many doors we go through in a day. I know we go through our front door, through our living room door, and all those doors. Sometimes, are you like me? You're pushing the door, even though it's got pull on the door, you're still pushing it. Or vice versa, aren't you? And so it's like yesterday, I was pushing for all I was worth. And actually, I just needed to have a look at the little note on the door. And it's such a card pull. <laughs> so, I think mean, life's a bit like that, isn't it? Life's a bit like pushing and pulling. And you just, some days, you feel like you're doing more pushing and pulling they're equally as hard aren't they i think push forward is a bit more positive isn't it pushing forward is is a good thing pulling something behind us is mm, it's um it can be hard can't it pulling and pushing business so you know for us all our life can be a bit pushy and pully can't it? Sometimes it's other people that are pushy and make us pulley, don't they? So, you know, that's life, isn't it? That's the way it is. So, there's a saying, isn't there, as well? When one door closes, another one opens. Now, there's doors, obviously there is, there's doors in the Bible, isn't there? Jesus had seven statements, I am statements. And I think the one that we could think about this morning when he says, I am the door. And what that means is he's the door, he's, he's the doorkeeper. So if we were to look at Psalm 23, which we're not this morning, but if we were, we would be thinking about Jesus being our shepherd and he becomes the doorkeeper as well because if we're his sheep, where the sheep used to be in the pen uh, in Jesus' time, there'd be that gap, wouldn't there? And the shepherd would lay down in the gap so that, you know, the sheep couldn't go out and the wolves couldn't get in. They would, like, keep watch. And that's what Jesus does for us, doesn't he? He keeps 
watch. He says, I am the door. And sometimes I think that's difficult as well. Because sometimes if, if we're thinking about Jesus being the door, that gets a bit pushy and pully, doesn't it? Oh, should I, should I be um, pushing it or should I be pulling it? I don't know. That's why it's important to have that daily relationship with God so that we can, we, we can have, we, we can know. And then we might need confirmation from a mature Christian friend uh, and who, who has been long in the Lord, uh, as it were, you know, had a good, strong, solid relationship with God uh, and Jesus. But same thing, you know, guided by the Holy Spirit. That's what we look to, isn't it? So Jesus isn't only our shepherd. Uh, he is, he, Jesus, I can't read me a writing, Jesus is not only our shepherd who leads us into the sheepfold, because that's where we need to be, because if we just carried on and we're just a bunch of sheep, like we just follow each other, so we need, we need the shepherd, don't we? We need him to keep drawing us back. Hey up, get over here. Come on, what are you doing over there? Because it's easy, isn't it, to get distracted? You know, I could be distracted a million times every single day about all sorts of stuff. It's easy to get distracted. So we need to remember that Jesus is the door and he is the only door by which we can enter into the kingdom. So it would be really good if we could choose to push that door. Oh, we might even have to pull it. Sometimes it's harder, isn't it? We might have to pull it open or push it open. I don't think it matters which way we do it. The whole idea is I am the door to open it, to let him in. You remember the door that we talked about with Jesus, the light of the world? There's only a handle on the on your side. You have to pull it open. So there you go. So what we need, let me have a look at me. Oh, what have I said now? What have I said now? Let's have a look. So God can and does open the doors of all our lives. And sometimes when we're going through a particularly difficult time, we want to close the door, don't we? Oof, I don't want you to go... Um, I don't, no, 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 I'm going to close the door on that. Some people say, yeah, I'm going to bury my head in the sand. I can't deal with that. I close the door on that. And you just have to hang on in there. Keep the door ajar because, you know, slightly open even. Because you can't eat the elephant all at once, can you? So when it's a tough time, don't close the door completely. You might want to close it a little bit because actually it's all too overwhelming. But you just need to keep that door open. There's a piece in the New Testament. So that's the second part of the Bible. And Jesus talks about, uh, it, it, in Matthew 7, he says, ask. Yeah, that's another thing we have to do. Ask. It's like opening the door, isn't it? Permission. Ask. And it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened unto you. For everyone who seeks, everyone who asks will receive. And he who seeks will find. And to him who knocks, the door will be opened. I think that's a great, as you, as you undo your advent calendars, think about the door. Are you through it? Are you thinking about it? Are you tentatively thinking, I might like to have a little look what's in, what's through the door, but I'm scared? I do loads of things every single day scared. Have you, <laughs> i give you a for instance. Have you been to the top of Frida? Huh? Up there, up the top of Westdale Lane. Have you gone up and down that road? Oh, it gives me jelly in my belly in a much different way than being nudged by the Holy Spirit. 
It makes me wobble whether I'm going up it in the car or down it. I remember um, about four or five years ago, I had a funeral visit there and it was thick snow. Absolutely. I was absolutely petrified. I sat in the car at the top of the hill and I thought I could have go down. I thought, well, I'll park up and then I'll walk down. But I'm frightened to death to walk in the snow. You know, and sometimes we're frightened to death, aren't we? We're absolutely, totally consumed by fear. But we have to let our faith shine through that fear that gives us the courage to go through the door. In the end, gave myself a good talking to at the top of Frida. Sort yourself out. Get your, And I was absolutely shaking like mad. Really, physically shaking. Going down that Frida. Is it a road or an avenue? Anyway, it's not an avenue. It's a road. And I was absolutely just petrified. But I still went down. I needed to go down. The other option was to phone the funeral family and say, you know, I can't make it. I mean, how awful would that have been? I can't make it. I'm stuck at the top of the hill. I did think about somebody coming and coming to the top of the hill. Because obviously, all those that live on Frida laugh about it. Because when I said, you know, told them the story, they laughed. Oh, we've sledded down here hundreds of times. It's amazing. And I'm like, Phew. feel like we're on a sled sometimes, don't we? We feel like we're, you know, we get to the top of the hill and it's good, bad and dandy, isn't it, for a little bit. And then we start going down, 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 don't we? And it's slippery slope sometimes. And actually we wonder how we're going to stop. So we say a prayer. I just, God help me. And I know sometimes people say, God help me. Still a prayer, isn't it? Still a prayer. So, doors. Snowy Frida. I don't think it's an avenue. Frida Roads. Anyway, you'll know it. Top of uh, Westdale Lane. It's, I had to go up it the other day. Up it. And that was giving me collie wobbles. So you can imagine where I'm like coming down. <sighs> I don't know. Anyway, I'm here to tell the tale. And we are. We are here to tell the tale. We get up every day and we tell our tale. We share our story. We tell people what God is doing in our lives. And by that we are encouraged. We encourage each other and that makes us brave, doesn't it? The encouragement makes us brave, makes us take that step forward. So have a look at your door this morning. Is it wide open? Can Jesus get in? Can, you, can he hear you asking for help? Just have enough faith to follow wherever he takes you. Still think it's a good idea to stay home. Oh, thank you, Lynn. I, I, I kept thinking it's a Frieda Avenue. Anyway, it's a horrible road. I don't like it, up or down. I still think it's wise to stay home. Stay safe. Stay well. Don't forget your masks if you have to wear one. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you and all those whom you love and care for and can't see at this moment in time. The Lord be gracious to you and give you his peace. And we ask for this blessing in the name of God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. I've still got some tea left. I'm happy to be here.
So then, Lynn Faulkner, Frida Avenue, does that go all the way around? Being an avenue? Or is that, I think that's Crescent, isn't it? Crescent does a half moon. Frida Avenue. Lordy me. <laughs> oh dear, what am I like? Honestly. Has Gertie got, uh, Tracy Orty, has Gertie got a, a doggy treat thingy then? Thank you, Tracy. Oh, man. Oh, man. Yeah, that door's open for each one of us, you know. Each and every one of us just have to walk through it. And if you've got to do it scared, do it. Do it. Bless you. Yeah, I think I did that, Lynn, the other day. I think I went up it from the bottom. I was picking something up from the selling pages. That's some right little boggins on the selling pages. Got our Elias some cars that... Ambulance. Uh, no, not an ambulance. A uh, uh, dustbin lorry that makes a noise. A dustbin lorry that makes a noise, a police car that makes me mommy, mommy, mom. He's delighted with them. Yes, delighted. <laughs> oh. Good to be with you again. So we're back here on Wednesday. Don't forget your carols. Us, we'll just have to choose them for you and you'll have to sing along. There's no words because I think, you know, we'll do some familiar favourites um, of our own then. And you'll be able to join in. It's just something that we thought you might like to do and link and have a, a bit of a play. Because I, mean, I, I would imagine as torturous as it is for me not to sing, it's equally as torturous, probably more so, for her to play. So, or not to play, as the case may be. Although we had a beautiful rendition of Come O Come Emmanuel this morning. Thank you, Lynn. It's beautiful. Tempted not to sing. It's hard. Because that's part of who we are, isn't it? Well, it's part of who I am. Morris! How very good to see you. If you inbox me your address, I've got a newsletter that I could deliver to you or pop a stamp on it. Please, that would be great. Please tell me where you live and I'll pop a stamp on it and it can go in the post today, a December newsletter. I've been wondering where you were. It's good to see you on here. Okay then, good people. I'm in the dining room today because the study looks like nothing on earth. People keep bringing things for the food bank and they bring things for something else and something else. <laughs> and you're like, oh. Anyway, as you know, we don't say no to anything. So we've got some beautiful gifts. We've got some beautiful um, donations for the food bank uh, happening on Tuesdays and Fridays. Oh, I'm so pleased that you've been watching, Morris. That's really great. And I've received a newsletter for you with your label on. 
And I thought, I just don't know where you are. So it would be great. And I'm glad you've been staying connected. So we're back in the building next Sunday. Please don't feel that you need to come to the building. Obviously, we are delighted to see those of you that would want that. We're equally delighted to record for you and you can sit with your mince pie, as Philip said this morning. You can sit with your mince pie and your PJs on and watch us just like this, <laughs> can't you? Yes, that would be good. I'm all drunk up, so I'm going to tell you that I'm off now uh, and I'll see you on Wednesday at 11 and um, much love and prayers. God bless.